gaming and exercise. Two activities that at first glance seem to be as far apart from one another as is physically possible. But if we go a bit deeper into the history between the two, we see that gaming and exercise have been trying to coexist for almost as long as gaming has been around. And this oftentimes comes in the form of an exercise-based peripheral, or at least a peripheral that could be used for exercise in addition to gaming. Just to name a few, we've had the Power Pad on the NES, the Exertainment Bike on the Super Nintendo, the iToy for the PlayStation 2, the Wii Mode and Wii Balance Board, the Kinect, PlayStation Move, the Poke Walker, the list goes on. But the main problem that pretty much all these exercise gaming hybrids have faced in the past, at least when it comes to working out, is that they usually lean too far to the side of gaming rather than exercise. For example, I know that for me, when I got the Wii Balance Board and Wii Fit back in 2008, I had the idea in my head that it would provide me with a good workout made fun by the fact that it was a Nintendo game, but what I actually got was a fun game that just so happened to involve moving around a little bit. It wasn't really the workout that I and many other Nintendo fans were looking for, and that was a bit of a disappointment. However, Nintendo would learn from this feedback and return over 11 years later with a new exercise peripheral, this time one that could actually make you sweat. The Ring Con, which released alongside the game Ring Fit Adventure in October of 2019, is a peripheral for the Nintendo Switch that shares its shape and general functionality with a resistance ring. Also known as a Pilates ring, a resistance ring is an exercise tool often used in the Pilates style of workout that, as the name suggests, provides the user with resistance-based exercises focused mostly on building muscle. Pilates rings have been around for many years now and are a proven and simple way for anyone to get a good workout with minimal equipment costs, so it makes sense that Nintendo would adapt the concept into a peripheral for one of their consoles. And in this video, we're going to look at the development of the Rincon, how it functions both on an in-game and a technical level, as well as some ways the Rincon could be used in other Nintendo games. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. As is the case with all the peripheral videos I do, I'd like to start with the development of this weird Nintendo peripheral. And the first thing we need to look at here is who was in charge of the development of the Rincon. And as this is a peripheral that came bundled with and works exclusively on a single game, I figured it would be a good idea to check the credits of Ring Fit Adventure for any clues as to who developed the Rincon. And lo and behold, there's a section in Ring Fit Adventure's credits labeled Rincon and Legstrap Development Team. That's exactly what we were looking for. In this section of the credits, there are six names of people who worked on either the Ring Con or the Ring Fit Leg Strap or both. There's no way to know who worked on what, so I'll just list off all the names just in case. We have Zenri Yuko, Ikeda Tomofumi, Ogasawara Yoshiyasu, Tamura Yoshitaka, Niwa Masato, and Taniguchi Yuki. Those are all in the Japanese name order, so reverse them if you want to know their names in the Western style. Now, it's all fine and good that we have the names of the people that developed the Rincon, but that doesn't really tell us anything about the actual development of the peripheral. For that, we're going to have to go a bit deeper. As usual, I started out by poking around on the English internet to see if there were any easily accessible resources that talked about the development of the Rincon, but as you might expect, I didn't have much luck. So once again, it was off to the Japanese side of the web for me. And with a single Google search of Rincon development in Japanese, I found what turned out to be the ultimate resource when it comes to Rincon and Ring Fit development. That resource is an interview conducted by Nintendo themselves and posted on the official Nintendo Japanese website on September 4th, 2020. It's titled Asking the Development Staff Ring Fit Adventure, and it goes into excruciating detail about almost everything there is to know about the development of Ring Fit Adventure. As far as I know, this article has never been translated into English, which I personally found really surprising. It's a super interesting read and gives you the same level of insight into the development process at Nintendo as the Iwata Asks interviews did back in the day. Honestly, after reading the interview, I found myself wishing they'd do stuff like this more often going forward, so the fans can get a peek behind the curtain of some more big Nintendo titles, but I guess that's neither here nor there. Let's focus up and talk about what I learned about the Ring Con's development from this article. Well, for starters, the development of Ring Fit Adventure actually went on for about a year from 2015 to 2016 without the Ring Con concept. Here's a quote from the producer of the game Kawamoto Koichi and the director Matsunaga Koshi. Kawamoto said, I gathered up about three staff members and we began slowly making prototypes around 2015. A little while later, Matsunaga chimes in to say, Initially, it was a game that you'd control just with the Joy-Con. 
Kamoto then picks up from here and explains in detail about how this worked. He said, The Joy-Con were very useful in controls based on moving your body. At the time, the game was an RPG in which you would hold the Joy-Con in each hand and use your body to defeat enemies. If you started to walk in place in real life, your character would move on the screen and if you ran into an enemy on the route, you would have to defeat them by punching or hitting with the Joy-Con, eventually ending up with you gaining experience points for winning. That's the type of game it was. So according to the producer, Ring Fit Adventure started out as something more akin to an RPG version of fitness boxing. You might be wondering at this point when the Ring Con actually came to be, and that's exactly where we're going next. As it turns out, the Ring Con was actually created by a completely different team for a completely different project within Nintendo. As the hardware development project leader Tanuma Yoshitaka said, this was something that happened shortly after software development began in around 2016. In the hardware development team that I'm a part of, we normally research various controller possibilities and create prototypes. Well, one day I said to Kaomoto, we have a controller where you use strength to intuitively play games that's shaped like a ring. It was completely by chance. To this, the interviewer says, does that mean the ring con wasn't developed for this game? Kaomoto replies, that's right. A completely separate team was doing their own individual development when one day I happened to hear about what they were doing. We were like, there's such a perfect controller within the company. I think you guys get the idea. By complete coincidence, a ring-shaped controller being developed by the hardware division and this unnamed exercise game team came together to give us what we now know as the Ring Con and Ring Fit Adventure. I'm honestly curious how the two sides of this story would have developed if they'd never crossed paths. What would Kalamoto's exercise game have looked like without the Ring Con? What would the Ring Con have been paired with if not Ring Fit Adventure? We'll never know now that the two have come together to make one game, but it's still something interesting to think about. I personally believe there's a lot of different ways the Ring Con could be used with various types of Nintendo games, but I'll get into that a bit later in the video. I know it's a bit late for this now, but next let's talk about how the Ring Con actually functions when you're playing Ring Fit Adventure. As you can probably tell based on the fact that the Ring Con is literally just a circle you hold with both hands, the way this peripheral works is very simple from a user standpoint. In Ring Fit Adventure, when you run into enemies, you're required to do certain exercises in order to defeat them. While not true of all, many of these exercises require the use of the Ring Con. And as far as I can remember, there are three main ways that it can be used. One is the obvious action of compressing the ring con inward, either with your hands, legs, or abdomen. Another is to pull the ring con outward with both hands to sort of flatten it out. And the last is to simply move the ring con in some way, be it up and down, side to side, or some other combination of directions. I believe it is also used like a steering wheel to make selections on screen, and possibly during certain exercises, but if that's the case, it was very infrequent. But anyway, in addition to movement-based controls, the Ring-Con also takes advantage of the right Joy-Con's infrared sensor to measure the user's heart rate at various points throughout your exercise routine. It's technically not something that the Ring-Con itself is doing, but as far as I know, it's a use for the Joy-Con that was only ever used while it's attached to the Ring-Con. Like I said before, the Ring-Con is a very simple tool, but I believe it is very effective at what it does. If you've ever spent any time playing Ring Fit Adventure, you know that it's no walk in the park using this thing for an extended period of time. In fact, in my opinion, I believe the Ring Con is the best first party exercise peripheral ever created, just based on how great of a workout it provides. I used the Ring Fit Adventure as my sole workout routine for several months around the time it released, and I can tell you with confidence it's an actual workout unlike many other so-called fitness games. Now of course the Ring Con is literally just a Pilates ring with a Joy-Con attached but it's not the peripheral alone that gets you sweating. It's the combination of the ring con and the game that makes it truly great in my opinion. But I digress. Let's move on to our next major topic, the internals of the ring con. So as usual, we first have to tackle the issue of getting this thing open, which usually involves unscrewing a bunch of stuff. And of course, that's also the case with the ring con. As for what we'll be opening, the only thing of interest to us on this peripheral is the oddly shaped plastic box at the top of the device where the Joy-Con attaches. To get this open, we first have to remove four small black Phillips head screws found around the plastic portion of the underside of the ring con. It's pretty interesting that Nintendo went with Phillips head screws here, as it makes it very easy for your average user to open. Usually, we'd expect to see something like tri-point screws or game bit screws on a peripheral like this to make it harder to open, but I guess for some reason they decided against that this time around. There are also four Phillips head screws found in the metal Joy-Con rail, but you can just ignore those if you don't care about doing a full teardown. From here, you can just pop the top half of this plastic unit off, and voila, there's our board. 
As for what's on this board, we've got a single chip labeled F038G6, followed by a similarly random sequence of numbers and letters. As you might expect, there is basically zero information about this chip online, but we can still infer as to its purpose. If I had to guess, I'd say it's a microcontroller in charge of interpreting data from the sensor connected to the board and sending that data out to the Joy-Con through the ribbon cable found adjacent to the chip. As for the sensor I just mentioned, well, thanks to that article we talked about earlier, I have a good idea of what it is and how it functions. So first off, where is this sensor? If I can trust the diagram provided by the interview, it's found inside that white glob of what appears to be some kind of glue-like substance on the top of the metal tube next to the board, and is wired directly to the board through three multicolored wires. According to Tanama, at the top of the Rincon, there's a metal tube. If we measure how much that tube changes shape, we can get very precise data on the deformation of the Rincon. So simply put, this stress sensor measures how much and in what way the metal tube at the top of the Rincon changes shape as you apply pressure. It's a simple idea, but it works very well. As for the ring itself, it's most likely made of something like fiberglass on the inside with the outer coating being rubber. If you look closely at the opening in the metal tube, you can see that the ring is actually not complete and is actually a straight piece of fiberglass folded inward to form a ring. The two ends were then riveted through to hold it in this shape and the ring con was born. This separation at the top also helps in applying pressure to the metal tube because it focuses the deformation on a smaller area or at least that's my theory. But I think that's just about all there is to know about the internals of this peripheral. All right, now let's get a little more abstract and talk about what I mentioned before, the many possible applications of the Rincon. As you all probably already know, the Rincon only works with a single game, Ring Fit Adventure. And as many people have brought up in the past, that's a bit of a shame. Off the top of my head, I could think of a bunch of Nintendo games that could benefit from Rincon support. First and most obvious is Mario Kart, or I guess any racing game for that matter. What's the Rincon shaped like? A wheel. And what do you use to drive a car? A wheel. It's a match made in heaven. Now you might be thinking the Joy-Con wheel accessory already exists, and while that's true, the Rincon offers a number of different gameplay options that could be cool to play around with. For one thing, you can use compression to accelerate, fire items, or even drift, which I think would be super neat and provide us with another fun way to get some exercise. They could also make pulling the ring con do something like brake, perform tricks, or honk the horn. I know it wouldn't be as precise as just driving with a controller, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be fun every now and again. Also, I just thought of this, but Monkey Ball could work really well with the ring con. It would be like you were actually holding the stage and moving it around to roll your monkey around. I guess you could probably do that already though if you just play with tilt controls and stick your Joy-Con into the Rincon, but once again they could add some Rincon specific gameplay options like motion controls tailored to the use of the Rincon, or jumping when you compress the ring. It's just something off the top of my head, but I think it could be cool. I could probably come up with a bunch more, but for the sake of time I'll just add one more. WarioWare. Rincon specific micro games would be so cool. Just imagine the wacky things the developers could come up with if they could use the Rincon's various control options. Now, it probably wouldn't work very well with the character based gameplay of Get It Together, but a WarioWare exercise game based on the Rincon could be a ton of fun. But anyway, those are my ideas for potential Rincon support in other Nintendo games. I'd love to hear what you guys would want Nintendo to do with the Rincon as well, so feel free to leave a comment below with your ideas. At its core, the Rincon is an extremely simple peripheral that is essentially just another exercise device that already exists. However, that doesn't mean it doesn't do its job and do it well. In fact, in my opinion, I firmly believe this is the best exercise peripheral that Nintendo or any other first party developer has ever put out. Even though they may have started out as separate projects, the Ring Con and Ring Fit Adventure when used in tandem provide an excellent workout that will more likely than not have you seeing some results rather quickly. And while it does currently only function with a single game, I do believe the Ring Con has the potential to be used with a number of other Nintendo games in many interesting ways. If Nintendo will actually do that is yet to be seen, but we can always hope. I really want to see that WarioWare fitness game. Maybe someday. 
But anyway, thanks so much for watching this installment of Nintendo and Weird Peripherals. I figured with Thanksgiving coming up, you guys might need a way to burn off some calories, so I went with the Ring Con this time around. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the ride. If you did happen to enjoy today's video, consider giving it a like. It's always greatly appreciated and helps me out a ton. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing as well. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Ack out. Well, I just realized I'm going to have to do a ton of exercise to get enough B-roll for this video. <sighs> the things I do for you guys.